side note on that, you know, I told you about, I think you listened. Oh, I made you listen. I made you that yeah. podcast from, oh, I can't think of his name and I'm sorry, the the CEO of HomeWise. Right. From Santa, is, he was from, based out of Santa Fe. Yeah, Santa Fe, Albuquerque, and they, they really specialize in, in uh, home helping, ownership. Yeah, home ownership, helping people that maybe won't otherwise have the opportunity to participate in home ownership have that opportunity. That would be priced out of the market. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they, they have a whole thing. They have coaching and they have a bunch of things to, to help people get into home ownership. And he said something that's really stuck with me, and that is that home ownership is affordable housing because he talks about you know that that oh, how much remember. rents have increased how much rent compared? has increased but but that 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 when you're a a homeowner you know for the most part your cost of housing this is a national stat 10 your cost of housing is 10 percent less than renters as a whole and I thought that was important, but okay. So I was, was going to say I was going to say the non-financial, and here we go. I'm going all yeah, financial on us. That was Jesse Abrams. I okay, believe, there we go. With yes, HomeWise. yes, yes. So it was really interesting, and since you brought it up, let's talk about that just a a little bit okay. longer. Okay. Okay. So you know, we're, it's so funny. We we started it off saying we're not going to talk about the financial reasons for owner home ownership, which there's a bunch of them. We'll get to that, but go ahead. No, this is good. Well, one of the things that really struck me that I hadn't hadn't really I mean I've heard it but I the way he said it I really understood it and I probably won't be as eloquent as he was in his podcast or the interview it was a podcast yeah but it was an interview but so he said you know if you look at generational wealth and going back to the 1940s and 50s and 60s when women and people of color perhaps were not allowed to purchase homes or were not allowed to um, have loans right? They weren't given the opportunity in those families to build wealth through owning real estate. So when, a, you know, the grandparents and parents of those folks passed on, they weren't leaving a house that had a hundred or $200,000 worth of equity to the family to continue on with their wealth building because they weren't homeowners, they were renters. And when he looked at how rents have increased proportional to housing costs, rents have increased considerably and housing costs are still more affordable, especially in our market than, um, than renting, right? Yeah, yeah. Rents go up every year. <laughs> Your mortgage, once you lock it in, tends to say the same except for taxes and insurance. And we talked about and that. Just like it cl it's so funny how you hear something and it just clicks and you go, yeah, your your mortgage cost doesn't reset every year. Your rent, for the most part, resets every year. Right. But the whole thing about how um, generational wealth and building wealth in families and being able to leave it for the next generation, some some sort of amount. And, you know, not everybody leaves the value of their equity in their home to somebody. A lot of times they turn that into cash to take care of themselves in older age, right? Yeah. So that they can maintain a lifestyle, right? For sure. And that's the reverse Whether, mortgage thing. Or a home that's equity a, line of credit. Pretend, or, it's kind of the same thing. But right. yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Just home equity anyway, line of credit and a, and a reverse mortgage are... Very different. Similar, but different. Yeah, very different. <laughs> it's tapping into the equity in your home. Okay. So the non-financial reasons to own to be to be a homeowner, and I know there's a bunch of people out there that think we shouldn't be saying that people should buy homes right now because the market's gone crazy and prices have gone through the roof and there's going to be a bubble that's going to burst. Well, I think the question you always have to ask is, okay, well, where are you going to live? You're going to live somewhere. Yeah. Are you going to pay money to live somewhere? Should you be paying somebody else's mortgage or should you be paying your own? For sure. and, and I believe if you're going to, you know, be in your home for a while, you're you're going to be just fine. Right. And OK, so non-financial reasons to own a home. Privacy. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's your place. Having a space that's safely your own. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You can choose who's there. You don't have a landlord saying I'm giving you 24 hours notice. We need to come in and inspect your place or whatever. Yep. It's yours, you know. It's it's your private space. Um, I, I think um, stability is a big deal, and I I know, you know that that whole thing about Maslow's, you know, hierarchy, hierarchy, of, needs. hierarchy of needs, and that, you know, okay, once you have food and shelter and whatever, 
you know, the, the next thing you need is security and stable stability goes along with that. And having a house and stability to go with that, I think is a, is a big deal. Um, one of the things that I think people overlook is personal expression, right? You don't have to ask the landlord if you can have, you know, the dog, right? You can't, you don't have to ask the landlord if, you know, I can paint that one wall orange, right? I don't have to ask the landlord if I can put a gazebo in the backyard if I want or the, or the big built-in kitchen that everybody wants right now. Which you're not going to do. Outdoor kitchen. Right, outdoor. Yeah. Which you're not going to do because you can't take it with you, right? Right. You know, you're not going to invest in improving the property very much versus if it's your own, right? I think another one that's good here is accomplishments. And I would add um, just pride in, you know, feeling good about your successes and having and being a homeowner. Right. And, and pride in having a legacy for your family of ownership. Right. Yeah. Um, comforts. You know, you, get, you can you, enhance it and make yourself as comfortable as you want, make, right? Make it what you if want. If you want right? that orange wall, you yeah. can make it to your comfort, right? I think I think this last one, it says community. Uh, you think about what's happened over the last year and the, 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 the lack of and need for social interaction, right? And being part of a community, be, be, being part of a social network. And when you become ownership in a community, that's what what happens. Right. You know, what's interesting, kind of a side note on that, Tigo, is when you buy a new home in a new home neighborhood, you tend to get to know your neighbors really well because everybody's kind of moving in at the same time. Because normally, D.R. Horton, Pulte, Abrazo, Twilight, they kind of build up a street, right? And mm -hmm. they kind of try to get out of people's way so that they don't just build a random house here or there over their new neighborhood. They yeah, try to yeah. kind of build out so they get construction moved away from where everybody's moving in. So a lot of times they're finishing homes all within the same few weeks right up the street. And so the neighbors or the people moving in all tend to get to know each other because when you move into an established neighborhood, they all know each other. They've already been there 20 years, they don't get together anymore. You know, you think about our neighborhood, Tigo. When we first moved in, we were the first or second people in that neighborhood. We both moved in, yeah. Like two the of same us, week. Like the same week, right. yeah. Right. I always say we were first, but I think their moving truck might have been right in front of us. But, yeah, yeah, by, by 100 um, yards. 100 yards. But when we moved in, I used to spend a lot of time. I had a community list on 4th of July, all the little kids in the neighborhood, we'd get together, yep. we'd decorate bikes with ribbons and flyers and everybody would get dressed up and they'd get Until their Until there pets. was that one neighbor that shot that bottle rocket into our tree and almost caught, burned our tree in our front yard yeah, down. Well, but that's a whole different conversation. But that didn't stop it. But for <laughs> several years, probably until I got too busy in real estate, honestly, yeah. I would organize neighborhood yeah. get-togethers. We would do holidays. We would have happy hours. We would get together with our neighbors. Now it's been 19, 20 years, 20, right? Yeah. And... Uh, honestly, I probably don't know everybody anymore in our 28 house neighborhood, right? And we haven't had a 4th of July well, parade. We used to get the Corrales I police know, and fire trucks to come to our little neighborhood and and do those things. But I mean, you know, community's huge. Community is a big deal. And again, I think people are yearning for that after after COVID, right? And, and just getting back out. And we've all right. seen that, right? right. In the restaurants and the shopping and you know, people just want to be out. You know, we live down here and our office is down here uh, off Alameda near the river where Bekeke Open Space is. Bekeke Open Space? Did I pronounce that I, right? I have no idea. All I know is how my brain pronounces it and Bekeke sounds good. Yeah. So it's, you know, Alameda and Rio Grande and, and there's the parking lot there. And yeah. Oh my gosh. Every weekend that parking lot is it's overflowing. Not just, not just weekends anymore. And yeah. you know, for, for people that want to take the, the Bosque Trail. Right. Yeah. We take the, the Alameda Bridge um, westbound every day, right? Yes. And it's amazing how so many people are still hanging out along the banks of the Rio Grande and enjoying the water with their dogs and having picnics and setting up shade structures. And to me, that's one of the best things that's come out of COVID. That's, that was a great segment.